All right, guys. What's up? Hey, man. Uh, Coach Mike here. I am joined by Katie McCarthy. We got a special episode for you guys today. Um, Katie is one of the members uh, here at CrossFit OIL in Hazlitt, Texas. And uh, so we thought we'd have one of our members on and give her a chance to uh, tell you guys a little bit about her, maybe some of her story uh, and some stuff like that. So uh, we can just jump right, just jump straight into it. Let's so, do it. Katie, welcome. Uh, Katie, tell us a little about yourself. What, uh, maybe where are you from? Kind of what do you do for work? Hobbies? <laughs> the cool the stuff. Things, yeah. Your social security number? No. <laughs> So I am originally from Buffalo, New York. Go Bills. Um, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Um, right before high school, we moved to Texas. I went to through high school in Texas and then ended up relocating back to Buffalo to go through college. Kind of bounced around back to Texas, back to Buffalo during my college years. It took me a little while to get my degree, but I did get my bachelor's degree in forensic science, crime scene investigation. Yeah. <laughs> Like CSI Miami like stuff. CSI, but like real. <laughs> CSI is real. <laughs> Absolutely. So after, it's real TV. <laughs> reality. Yeah. So after that, um, pursued a career in criminal justice, ended up wanting to change pace just because career wasn't really working out, wasn't able to get a true position in <laughs> forensic science crime scene. So the closest thing I was able to get into education-wise without having to start all over was cybersecurity. So I ended up enrolling in a master's program for cybersecurity and at Utica, and I got my degree about like a couple years ago. So I have my master's in cybersecurity, so that's currently what I do. I am a cybersecurity analyst, and that's been a <laughs> fun like, journey. <laughs> I'll say for those for those listening at home, like like what is that? Like ex- <laughs> explain explain that to. Explain it's that to everybody. So many things. So it sounds like cool and like awesome. Is it like, like the hacker with the green hacker, screen? Yes, and your... with the hoodie and you know the sunglass. No, that is not what it is. That might be one side of what it is, but it's not what I do. And I am not technical whatsoever. So like I know my way around a computer, but I'm much more focused on the human side. So like social engineering, like what uh, causes people to you know click on a phishing email or give up their social security just by somebody asking stuff like that that's more, more i'm interested in so currently at my position i oversee third-party vendor management which is important um but like not very technical and then i also oversee our security awareness program so those are the two things i oversee and i very much enjoy it it's been wonderful yeah that's cool i don't know what half of that is but it sounds cool <laughs> yeah. i remember um I remember when I used to, uh, I was an engineer prior to owning a gym. I worked at Lockheed and we would, uh, regular, I'd say maybe once a month, maybe more often. Um, but we would regularly get fake phishing emails from the company trying to like get us to click. And it was, some of them were like super obvious, but then Mm -hmm. others were actually pretty well built and they'd be like, they got you strike one. You're like, Oh no, you know, they strike one, you know, go talk to your manager and you're like, yep. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating to see people just fall for the, like, weakest (laughs) phishing attempts. But, I mean, there's a whole, like, psychology behind it. You know, they're really using and leveraging fear against you. Like, hey, you know, your account's going to be locked, you're going to be closed, you know, click this, do this now. So that's what people really fall for. So I try to educate people and prevent them from doing that. But... I can only do so much. There are some people that just, yeah, that's just what they do. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, prince in, uh, the prince in Africa wants to give you money. <laughs> Click yeah. here to claim your, enter your payment info so we can, mm-hmm. call it, so we can know where to deposit that check. Yeah, and actually right now it's more so like, hey, this is your boss that you've never heard from and I'm just texting you randomly. I need you to send like this money. <laughs> So it's, yeah. it's fun. I like it. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, any, uh, any cool hobbies or what is, uh, I was going to say after hours, but that probably doesn't sound the right way. But like, what is, what does after work look like for you? After work, <laughs> other than CrossFit <laughs> and all the fun stuff with exercising is like really animals. So I've always had a love for animals. <laughs> we have... Oh my gosh, like a small animal sanctuary at this point. Let's just be honest. 
Um, so we have one dog. We have four cats now, uh, two rabbits, and a menagerie of chickens. <laughs> that's a that's a great word. Yes, just a menagerie of chickens, and they're just I love them. They're just ridiculous, and they just run around and they're like rah. It's just they are dinosaurs, and it's so fun. <laughs> but I love them, and it is a lot of work, daily work, you know, just um, maintaining and like having to clean and take care of them. But it's just so fulfilling for me. That's always kind of been my hobby. And eventually, like, my dream is to have my own animal sanctuary with, like, cows, horses, just, like, neglected animals that need, you know, space in a home. That's kind of the space that I've fallen into because most of our animals, like, we, it wasn't our choice. They just kind of showed up. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I guess you need a home. Come on in. So that's really what my dream would be. What's, like, the craziest animal you want to sanctuary? Is that a verb? Sanctuary. Oh, uh, craziest animal. I would say I love the longhorn cows. Just, oh man, I'm just like, I'm just in awe, just like the size and just the horns and like, they just come in like all sorts of colors and it's just, oh, I love them. I love just driving by some of the um, ranches by us do have longhorns and I just love just like slowing down and being like, ah, oh, hi guys, moo, you know, got to do like moo. <laughs> And they're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I just love you so much, Moo. <laughs> I like, yeah, I, I really like Longhorns. I remember um, before I lived in Texas, I moved here. I was doing math the other day. I think I've been here nine years now, or this summer's nine years. And before Texas, I mean, like, like you knew what a Longhorn was. You saw pictures. Like, I would have known one if I saw it. I've probably seen a couple, but like, I remember driving through like my first couple of months here and like seeing some Longhorns, like. I mean, 20 feet away, like on the fence line as I'm driving on the road and being like, Yo, those are some, those are some big horns. Yeah. Like those are so cool. And they're just like, big cows. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. Um, well, awesome. Um, well, Hey, so, so did you, um, so, so prior, to, so you're working out now at the gym, like, so like prior to that, like, do you do sports growing up or just love to run on your own or not really, or more of a re more of a wrestler jujitsu type i mean like what uh do you do anything kind of in that physical world or working out prior so actually i was not sporty i was not in any kind of uh karate uh sports like nothing through school i didn't really have an interest like i've like as a little kid like i tried doing soccer um that's really the one i can remember at the moment but just trying and never really never really clicked it just wasn't my thing i wasn't didn't feel athletic so it never really was a thing for me um previously when we were living in memphis after i had graduated and i was going through my criminal justice career um i had started kickboxing and that was kind of like my first introduction into like that kind of class exercise environment and i really enjoyed kickboxing um you know, i've done like i think probably three classes ever on kickboxing um and it was probably more of a tempo dance than it was like mm -hmm. actually throw a real punch. Yeah. I was exhausted at the end of it. I was it very impressed <laughs> with how long people could continue to do that and keep moving. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of punching and kicking, obviously, but some cardio mixed in. Um, so after doing that for a while, unfortunately, it was just punching and kicking. <laughs> it's like, okay, can we do something else? Like, maybe? So... Ended up kind of falling off from that, uh, you know, going to the gym, you know, signing up for like those 24 whatever hour gyms, stuff like that. It was just, it wasn't really my scene. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just here, you know, just mindlessly on the treadmill or like the Stairmaster, you know, and then everybody's, you know, over in the weight room and you're just like, oh my gosh, like for one thing, I don't know what, what to do, you know, how to do it safely. And then just, it's very intimidating. Um, so that didn't really last too long either. So that, I'm really coming from a background of no sports, not really much athleticism <laughs> before I started CrossFit. And now here I am. <laughs> yeah. Did you have like maybe a desire to, I say get fit, that it didn't have to be get fit. Like did, did you have like a desire to compete? Like are you competitive in maybe other areas of your life? I, I just am. I always get curious with that question with some people is because like some people just get really competitive in certain areas. Like... Like, like like gaming or something, you know, but like sometimes translating it to phys physical, I, I don't know, like sometimes there's a disconnect there. I was just curious if you get competitive other places. 
So for the most part, no. I think everybody is hidden competitive, by the way. <laughs> I think we all are competitive in some way. <laughs> and it does come out. Um, but for the most part, no, I'm very just like laid back, relaxed. Um, but I am finding since like I've tried to bring Brian, my husband, to class that I am now like in more of the competitive mindset. Like, oh my gosh, I need to deadlift more than you, don't I? <laughs> so like I do kind of fall into that a little bit. The old spouse rivalry. That's yes. always a good one. Yes. Super healthy. It's good. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, all right. So yeah. So so not really much physical. You know, just so you were like working out because you felt like you had to or were supposed to or. So it was just kind of a nice break to go. Yeah, throw some punches and kick it. Kicks, kick it. <laughs> yes, it did. It was a good stress reliever. Um, but at the time, I've always struggled throughout my life with um, being overweight. And with my weight and just having a negative um, view of myself and my body. I've struggled with eating disorders um, and just poor self-image and uh, just, yeah, a lot of negativity towards myself and my body and just how I look. So um, I really started to look into keto and ended up doing the keto diet quite a bit. Um, obviously, couldn't sustain it for I don't think I knew, I don't think I knew that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, so obviously dropped a lot of weight but not sustainable whatsoever. So just ended up picking that weight back on. But after a couple how long, of that, How long did you commit to it? Was it a... It was about like a month long. It was like a four-week program okay, that okay. we did. And then had to like scale back just because you're just like... Ah. <laughs> yeah. I forget. Oh, I, there, there's a term for it. It's not the keto drop, but it, it's something like that. And it's around that mm -hmm. range, that yeah. timeline. Yeah, and I know like people can get like the keto flu at the beginning when their body's I think just that, going yeah. through that change. Yeah, it's it's intense. It's something, and it's just it's so hard to keep up because like one, you know, day of like just regular eating, you know, not super strict, you fall out of ketosis, so it can really mess you up. Um, but yeah, did that for a while on and off. You know, dropped a lot of weight. Was, you know, what I would say fit quote unquote was you know going to the gym and kickboxing at the same time like I was skinny and thin as much as I could be <laughs> but um it just wasn't compared to now like what I'm doing now I know that wasn't that wasn't really being fit that wasn't being strong that wasn't what I wanted to be and do mm -hmm. yeah that's cool yeah so so tell us kind of what you're doing now then I mean obviously I say obviously to me working out at the gym and CrossFit, but let, let's start with like the physical side of it. Like what does that look like getting in and starting at OIL? Kind of what were you feeling like when you first started? I also, also love a good, what's your first class story? Do you remember what your first workout was? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Absolutely. It's one of my favorite things to do with CrossFitters. Absolutely. So I guess I'll start with that. Cause it's just so funny. At least I think it's funny. I mean, it wasn't funny at all, <laughs> but mine, I'll say my first two days I think are pretty funny. I'll tease yeah. it. You guys can hear it some other time. So I ended up signing up online and like ended up just showing up and Jonathan was teaching class and I just walked in and like we chatted for a little bit, but I think that was before he was doing his actual like introductory meetings. And so like, I just kind of just hopped right on in now. Oh my gosh, what were we doing? I know we were doing wall walks. We were also doing box jumps and I forget what else we were doing, but it was like a heavy cardio day and coming from not exercising for at least like two, three years coming into that. I got hit by a train, <laughs> I swear. I did not come back for a week. And like Jonathan was like texting me like, hey, when are you coming back? And I'm just like, I can't even look at my phone. <laughs> I'm so sore. <laughs> I actually, th now that you're saying that, I might remember this day. Was it running? I don't recall if it was running, but I know for sure wall walks and boxes, box jumps. I think I remember, I think I remember this day. It was, was this last summer, roughly? It would have been back in December of twenty one. All right, I'm, I'm messing something up. I'm Never sure we're done. <laughs> I just no, I just remember a day like talking to you and talking after class or something. I remember it was something like that. All right, forget it. Maybe not then. Yeah. So it was just like full on into the frying pan. So why the frying pan into the fryer? So so why'd you come back? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still asking myself that question. <laughs> um, for me, like just being sore, like I felt like I was doing something, you know, it felt good. It didn't feel good. I mean, but it felt good just to get out and do something. And I knew that my body was starting that process of change. So that's why I went back 
and I like I didn't dislike it even though it was like the most horrible workout ever <laughs> and I was completely unprepared but it didn't scare me away yeah that's cool that's that is definitely one of the things that I like about CrossFit is that every day is just a little bit different even if it's the same it's still different and it's less um of course we repeat movements and we do stuff like you know you can't always do a new movement but every workout is a little bit different. Every day is a little bit different or it's structured or different numbers and this and that. And so there's this level, I mean, I'm a, this month is 10 years for me. And so like, I've, I mean, I've, I've, again, I've repeated workouts themselves, but like, it just feels different every time. And like, that's always so fun and something that I enjoy so much about it is it's just always different. Mm -hmm. And so like, there's always more, it's not three sets of 10, this three sets of 10, that three sets of 10, this, and just like work your way around punch, the punch, kick, kick. Yeah. Punch, work punch, your way around the kick. machines or do the mm. dumbbells or, okay, you, you walk for 20 minutes and then you go do a couple machines and then you walk for 20 minutes. And like, I guess that's it. That's, that's something that's, uh, that I just absolutely love about it. Yeah. I'm definitely the same. I love the variety and the, the customization, I guess, like even if you can't do one particular movement, you know, there's always something else you can do. And it's, I mean, it's not always different, but it feels always different because you're always in a different place, you know, in a different mindset, different, you know, physical place when you're walking into the gym. So, so cool. Um, okay. So that's kind of working out like, uh, in, in your first week or two or whatever. Uh, I feel like, I feel like for a while you were kind of a one or two times a week type of person. I think yes. you even kind of told me that once you, I, I think, I think I remember, I, I guess I just messed up the day or the working out time period, but I think I remember talking to you within the first couple of weeks and was like, Hey, just what's up on Mike and just meeting. And, uh, and you were like, yeah, I'll come kind of once or twice a week. Or you might even said like, Hey, I'm just really sore and this is all I really want to do right now. But I, I feel like I remembered that's how you were trying mm -hmm. to start was just one or two times. Yeah, absolutely. Were you just literally that sore? <laughs> yeah, partly. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, part of it was also, I didn't think, not, not that I didn't think I could do it. It was just still so new to me that like I had that disbelief of, oh, I can jump on a box, you know, I can do a wall walk, you know, I can do a deadlift. So it was much more apprehension, I guess would be the best way. So, so kind of what, uh, I mean, Katie regularly comes now. I would, uh, off the top of my head, I don't know your attendance numbers, but I'm assuming it's five or six. Maybe all six days for the past two months. Yeah. Yeah. Which has got to get you in the five and six plus a bonus session on Tuesdays. <laughs> plus a lot more. Yeah. Bonus session on Tuesdays with Brittany learning, mm -hmm. um, coach Britt learning some Olympic lifting. So what, okay. So what got you over that hump kind of once or twice a week, sore, apprehensive, just learning and overwhelmed. Like what, what helped you get over that hump into like, I'm the type of person that works out six times a week or five, or this is part of me now. Uh, there's a lot in that. Um, so one of the things I've been going through, uh, health wise, and one of the biggest reasons why I started going to CrossFit and OYL was I was dealing with a lot of fatigue. So for the past, like almost three years, just dealing with chronic extreme fatigue, like wasn't able to function very well during the day, always had to take a nap, just severe brain fog. It was affecting work. It was affecting like my driving. I wasn't comfortable driving just because I was just so, you know, tired just tired all the time so I was tired of being tired so I at least had enough awareness to say okay I need to do something like maybe exercise is the answer so that's be the main motivating factor of why I came to my first class and started at OYL I wanted to address my fatigue and feel better um like yes of course like I want to lose some weight you know lose some inches and all that but it was really it was the fatigue that I wanted to address. And so it's been, it's been a struggle even, you know, coming to class for the past, oh my gosh, year and a half that I've been doing this. It's been a struggle. Every, every day was a struggle, uh, just dealing with the fatigue and then coming to class on top of that and just feeling like, oh my gosh, my body can't handle this. But I got to the point, the more I did it, like the more I realized like, oh my gosh, I did this for like a month. And then like, I did this for six months and then like, oh my gosh, I've been here for like a year. And like, I just increased my consistency of coming to class and kind of just realized like, for me, there's no difference in how I feel fatigue wise coming one to two days a week or coming four to five, six days a week. 
So there really wasn't much of a difference. So I'm like, I might as well do it and just gain as much as I can and progress as much as I can, you know, and just deal with the fatigue on the side. Yeah. So, so how do you feel now with the fatigue? As it, I mean, I think it's gotten better from what I've heard, but clearly cured, still working on it. I, I know there's other stuff going on in the background too. Mm-hmm. Um, at, how do you feel in the fatigue world now? Oh my gosh. It's just wonderful. Just wonderful. I feel alive again. And that was one of the biggest, the hardest thing that I had to deal with when I was going through this fatigue was I just didn't feel alive and I didn't feel right. I knew it wasn't right. Like there's something wrong. Something's going on, you know, and seeing, going, getting blood work, seeing doctors, you know, not really, you know, trying what I can to address, you know, like, Hey, here's an indicator on a blood test. Let's address that. Okay. Did that still didn't really feel much better. So, um, and just going from that, it's just been finally, (laughs) it came down to nutrition and my digestive system and getting that, uh, healthy is really, that was, that was the key. And it's just, it it just blows my mind how much like that just impacts my body and like our bodies and just that fatigue. It was just so extreme because my digestive system wasn't working properly. And like, I just had no idea. Like you never wouldn't think (laughs) it's just like your stomach, you know? And like, that wasn't a conversation that really came up with the doctors. You know, it was just like, Oh, it's your prescription or you're just depressed. Wait, what? (laughs) Yeah. I'm pretty sure not, but yeah, it's just, I, I can't even be, begin to express just how much of a difference. And like, I know I still have a long way to go because I've been dealing with these digestive issues um, for basically my entire adult and teenage life. So lifelong issues aren't going to, you know, the effects of that aren't going to be fixed overnight, you know, and I don't expect it to be weeks. It's probably going to be months for me to like fully recover, I guess, from that. But I can already tell that I'm in a much better positive place. So after the mock meet that we had on Saturday, I was just wiped out on Sunday, just just gone. And like, I felt that fatigue that I did previously for every day (laughs) for like two years. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it was like, it just affirmed that I am getting better. And it's just, it's just crazy. Yeah. That's, um, that's something, uh, this is changing subject just a tiny bit, but that's something that's very unique about Olympic weightlifting. Um, I would say powerlifting is probably extremely similar in this, but like that meet. So at the, so at the gym, uh, last weekend from when we're filming this, uh, on Saturday, we did a fun in-house, just us mock Olympic weightlifting meet. And so we each got three lifts. We did it in the style and the, um, you know, the bar never went down and we traded through our, you know, traded off with our friends and kept score, but like, you know, but it was a fun time. And, uh, something that still surprises me is whenever I do like, like if we're going to max out a lift in class, sometimes we usually max out a lift and then we'll go do some other running and wall balls or whatever. But like to actually give your real 100% effort into a barbell, even still as many times as I've, as I've done it, doing like multiple maxes in one day shocks me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it, it's a CNS central nervous system yeah. fatigue. And, uh, I think that's interesting I, that it kind of brought back the same similar feelings or same style. And so, yeah. So yeah. So I wonder if your CNS has just been blitzed for, you know, for, for a while. That's mm-hmm. kind of interesting. Um, okay. So you've been, uh, I'll say, so another thing, uh, and you've been mentioning like digestive issues and stuff. So like you've been working with uh, Melody, who was on the, who was on last week, the previous episode, episode three, call out, probably going to be another one with her. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been working with Melody on nutrition, but I was talking to some people today about nutrition. I was telling them, I was like, the way Melody does it though, is it's not like we think nutrition and we think like diet, like I can't eat this thing or I'm going to count how much I eat. I'm going to weigh and measure my food. I'm going to divide it up into portions in this plastic container, you know, and all that type of stuff. But like, she just has this like different approach to nutrition that hopefully you guys heard on the previous episode if you didn't, but like, so you've been working with Melody for a little bit now. Like what is, what has that been like, you know, with, within this conversation as well? 
Yeah, it's been fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I am so happy that she, you know, is doing the nutrition program and just so open and willing to help in just the the amount of knowledge she has. Oh my gosh. She just, oh my God, every time I talk to her, it's just something new. And like, I always laugh because I'm like, it's all related, isn't it? It's all connected. Digestion and body. You're like, yep. (laughs) It's just, oh, it's, for me, it's fascinating. Like I, I love science and like just, just how the body, you know, works together and especially with your digestive system. And like, she gives you all the details and the facts and it just lays it out in a progression that's easy to digest <laughs> and understand. <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Mike approved. Yep. <laughs> so it's been wonderful. And like, we're not even like halfway through or something, the program and it's, just huge changes, obviously, like just with me and my fatigue and addressing um, my digestive issues and just figuring out more about myself and like what's actually going on, getting answers. Like that's really what I wanted, you know, from doctors and like from, you know, doing all this is like, I just wanted answers. Like what's going on with me? Why is this doing this? And I wasn't able to ever get that until like talking to Melody and working with her. Like, okay, well, this is doing this because of this. <laughs> this is what you need to do to fix this. So it's it's been a wonderful experience, and I'm so thankful and happy that she's with us. What um, uh, what specifically has she like changed for you? Di- I guess diet wise, or I say diet because I don't have another word to use. Like, what is I guess nutrition is probably the better word, but are you? did you eliminate some foods? Are you eating more of this or less of that or? Yeah. Yeah. So sniffing um, salts and now you're good, you know, know, like what, uh, like on the, the, (laughs) all the salt. So yeah. One of the things is like, yeah, stay salty. Yeah. I literally need to stay salty. So one of my issues was, was I was not intaking enough sodium and that was affecting my digestion. Um, so I've have, sorry, I have IBS. So I mostly deal with the C side of IBS, which is the constipation side. I, as I've gotten older, I've noticed that it's fluctuating between both sides, constipation and diarrhea. So as I'm getting older, it has gotten worse, but it hasn't been like impacting like my daily life, anything like that. So not like super extreme, but still enough to (laughs) cause this fatigue because it's going on for so long you know, it's just been so draining on my body. So one of the things is to increase my sodium needs. So, and that's really, that's really helped, um, keep me regular. So that was one of my biggest issues was I was, you know, your options are, okay, well, here's medication. (laughs) And that was just too strong for me. Or here's like over the counter, like Miralax, something like that. So I've been basically been taking Miralax for, oh my gosh, uh, between like got to be more than five years, like at least 10 years, basically my like entire adult life just to stay regular. I'm like, it's probably not healthy. Like why should I be (laughs) ingesting this into my body, you know, just to stay regular. Um, but like that was the only solution that I could find at the time. And just talking to her, she's like, you need more sodium and just uh, started doing sole water, which is just <laughs> really salty water <laughs> and just doing that in the morning. And it's just like, this works. What's going on? <laughs> so it's been great. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, uh, Katie, even we have a PR board stands for personal record. Traditionally on the PR board, it says <laughs> one rep max deadlift, 200 pounds, 10 more than last time. But Katie says, actually, I forget what yours says exactly, but I think it was a regular, I was just got my digestion under yeah, control. Digestion under control. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of a cool one. Um, something that, uh, I think it's in the nutrition program, um, that we've got, but there's like a, one of the days, like the little, I say blog articles, like one of the little reading per day. It's like, usually there's like a, a one to three minute thing to read every day mm-hmm. just to kind of get your day started. Um, uh, just get started like t- like today's. I just know the one today because I'm I'm doing it. I'm actually doing it along with you guys right now. Um, is about uh, like hydration and stuff like that today. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm kind of blanking on where I was going with that. Uh, th- there was this one. Uh, oh, uh, that's what it was. There was this one article one time that said it was talking about non-scale victories, and the purpose of that one was scale in terms of like the weight scale. So like. You know, if, if I weigh 200 pounds and I go down to 198, some people 
consider that a win. Some people consider that bad because you're losing muscle, right? It just depends where, mm -hmm. what you're trying to do with your nutrition or your body. But a non-scale victory is maybe I'm the same, but like, what are the victories I'm getting off of the scale? And so a good example of this one is like, maybe my pants fit differently, but I weigh the same, right? Because we're trading muscle fat. Like, mm -hmm. I think we're all familiar with that concept. And so I think that was really cool. That's what I, I got excited that the PR board had a, I say non-scale, but like had a non-barbell victory or a non first pull up victory. And I thought that was just kind of a really neat thing. Um, oh, that good, we're cause I was kind of nervous to put that up there. No, no I love it. Cause <laughs> just, I'm like, is anybody going to yell at me? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, I, I just like that we, cause that's what we want to do at OIL. Um, is, is like, we want to celebrate the, the bigger health picture. We, we start with working out. I'm not going to lie. Like that is what we mm -hmm. start. 99% of people come in and start with uh, some sort of membership related to CrossFit classes. But like, that's just where we start because we think that's an easy place to start. But like where we want to go with everybody is the bigger picture of health and you have to include nutrition mm -hmm. and then like Absolutely. digestion. I think that's probably what I've learned the most from Melody as well um, is how big of a deal your digestive system is in affecting all the other things. Yeah. She may, she's like got me convinced it's the only thing that matters at this yeah, moment. I Maybe that'll change my mind after <laughs> I, you know, but she's got me convinced it's the only thing that matters right now. Yeah. It's a huge foundation. I mean, it is the foundation of like the body. She, okay. I've been doing this for a while now, right? Like <laughs> I've been in this space for a while. We've owned the gym for, we've, we opened it uh, February, seven years ago. So seven and a half years or so been in CrossFit for 10 years. Like I've been talking nutrition with people for a long time and I still ask her questions and she gives me answers. And I'm like, I've never heard anybody answer it like that before. Mm -hmm. And I'm like that just like, it even changed the way that I look at things. I don't know. It, she's awesome. I'll yes, plug it one final yes. time, but yes, go watch episode three if you haven't, <laughs> but, um, that's really cool. Well, awesome. Okay. So, so let's say, uh, so let's say you're talking to somebody that's, maybe feel similar. They, w whether it's specifically like IBS or whether it's fatigue or I wasn't the athletic kid growing up, but like, I know, but like, we know that part of health is some version of exercise and, um, you know, eating a nutrient dense diet and lowering stress levels and like stuff like that. Like, what would you, um, what would you kind of tell that person? I'm, I don't know. Maybe another way to phrase it is like, what would, what would you tell, uh, 18 year old Katie? Ooh, that's a big question. Ooh, that's, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, just try. Just try it, you know. Try it before you decide it's not for you or you don't like it. Um, I think one of the biggest things that, you know, we can do better just in general is just try things. You know, even if it scares you. It's uncomfortable for me. Like, this is uncomfortable for me. But just try. You know, you never know you know, the impact something will have, you know, whether, you know, it's a positive impact, great. But like, if it's, you know, not what you think, at least you did it. And now you have that knowledge, you know, just try. Have you tried, have you tried anything just like completely crazy just over the last year or so just to like <laughs> say that you've tried it? <laughs> oh, probably. Um, I guess one of the biggest things would be that mock meet. Originally, I wasn't going to do it because, like, I know I would get super nervous and I'd be like, oh, I got a PR, blah, blah, blah. And then, <laughs> you know, just kind of, like, be in that kind of mindset, which isn't healthy for me. Um, it doesn't help me. But Britt was like, okay, if you're not going to sign up, I'm signing up for you. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm doing this. And that was, like, my first time doing anything like that. And I loved it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more just watching everybody else and just being like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like this is great. This is awesome. So that was kind of like my try thing for me, at least most recent one that I can think of off the top of my head. I, uh, I find this very interesting. I'm going to dip into my own story just a tiny bit, but I, uh, I think the last, the last time I PR'd my snatch uh, wide grip ground to overhead it was like three or four years ago. And my clean and jerk was another year or a year or a year and a half prior to that. It was, I think it was 2018 was my clean and jerk. So we're at like five years now. Um, and since then I've done strength cycles. I've practiced it. I've done clinics that we have at the gym. Am I going to say that I put a, a thousand percent effort into it? No, absolutely not. I wasn't trying to like compete, compete, but like I was, 
it was, I wasn't just attending class through that whole time. I was also trying to put in extra work on the side and I would not max out. Well, we kind of for fun in the fall in September and October, we did a one at max snatch day and then we did a max clean and jerk day. <laughs> and it was a set. We ran it as a Saturday class, but like more of a fun way. And I PR both snatch and clean and jerk those days on a, I say a regular Saturday. What I mean by that is I worked out the day before normal as I always would. Like there wasn't any prep for it. Like we weren't doing cycles leading up to it. And for me, um, and what I, what I wanted to say to you guys and just anybody listening, like for me, like actually the lower stress, not lower stress of the environment, but like the lower stress of like, it wasn't, um, I wasn't building up to it. Like I like allowed myself to live, be more alive. You said earlier, like I allowed myself, allowed myself to live more freely. And within that, um, that, that just helped me and like just having fun with it. And so actually the mock meet I thought was, um, I did that as well on Saturday. I got within five pounds of my snatch. I just barely freaking missed Mm -hmm. getting a PR on that one, which was fun. And it was just cool. And I smiled and walked away and it, and then clean and jerk, I got a new max. And so like, I just thought it was so interesting that like in the casual fun environment of it, that was better. I actually did two workouts on Friday and both of them involved front squats. Mm -hmm. I literally, I think I'd done the math. I'd done over a hundred and, um, I was gonna say 150. I think it was actually like 175 or something front squats the day before and then maxed out. How do you max out your clean and jerk when you do that many front squats? Like, I don't know, but it was just, it was just so cool because, um, that's what I want to get you guys is like sometimes like taking some of all that pressure off to PR and like, I was just going to have fun. And then I was like, well, Hey, the weights are moving. I guess I can add some more. Mm -hmm. And like, that was just, I don't know. That was just a cool thing for me recently. Um, to bring home her point of like, just try something new. Like whether those officially like new, like new, new things or not for me, like I just really shocked and surprised myself how I was able to just do it when I got into the relaxed state of like giving up the pressure I put on myself to, I have to max or have mm-hmm. to PR or yeah. I have to do this thing, but I'm just like, Oh, like, let me just show up. Like, let me try this new thing or new format, hang out with my friends. Um, and that was really cool. Just show up. That's what I do every day. <laughs> Yeah, I try to let go. Well, I have let go of a lot of those. Like, okay, you know, I go to PR every day, you know, do this, do that, maximum effort. Like, it's I've learned it's not about that. It's much more, it is consistency over intensity. You know, it's not, it wasn't a good mind space for me to come in with, like, all this pressure on myself, you know, in, like, a pass-fail situation. I'm setting myself up for failure. I'm like, okay, here's number, must get number. And, like, just getting so frustrated with myself, being like, oh, I can't get there. But then also, like, I needed to understand, like, I did have all these, you know, digestive, you know, health issues, fatigue issues going on. You know, I'm already, you know, struggling. You know, my body's, like, doing the best it can. You know, don't get frustrated. You know, let's just take a step back. You know, be aware. Like, it is what it is. We're all coming in every day from a different place, you know, different mindset, you know, physically different. You know, nothing's going to be the same. So one day harder might be different than another day harder so I like that I like just showing up you know just being in the moment doing the best I can for that day and that moment yeah I uh today uh the workout at the gym today is called core values did you work out that or you coming this afternoon coming this afternoon (laughs) yeah um the workout is called core values and Mm -hmm. it was just kind of a play like we're doing some core work like uh, toes to bar um so just kind of play on that but um I took two minutes. I don't even know if I took that long when I was coaching at 9am. Um, and I said, Hey, like who knows what the core values of OIL are and nobody knows, which is our fault. Like we got to put them out there more. So here's what, do you know Uh, what they are? Hold on. They're (laughs) right in front of the the time my mind goes, they're right in front of the in body scanner. So if you're looking at something, um, I feel ashamed that I don't remember at the moment. (laughs) That's right. Don't feel bad. We, oh. we, we have coaches that don't know. But again, that, that's our fault for Give not putting it out there. What's the letter? What do they start with? They all start with an E. E. Okay, I was way off. I'm like, C, Q, what? Um, effort was one, right? That's number one, yeah, effort. effort. Um, okay, let's go. Excellence? That's number two. You got it. Effort, excellence, and I don't remember the third one. It's something... Uh, 
like effort and excellence to me are like hardcore, hard charging. It's more of a soft skill. That's your hint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that just threw you off. Uh, yeah. Empathy. Empathy. Okay. Empathy. But uh, anyways, so our core value is uh, uh, effort, excellence, and empathy. Um, so I, I just uh, said literally two minutes. I don't even know if it's that long. I just like, hey, just FYI, these are the values. And I'll just kind of do that again here. But like for us, effort is the just try something new. Like just show up. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't even put in the effort to show up for your spouse, your kids, yourself at the gym, you know, work or like, like w- whatever you want to put in that blank. Like if you don't put in the first bit of effort, which is literally show up, literally turn off your alarm, sit up and get out of bed. Like if you don't put in the first effort in your day, like, like, like what are we doing? You know? And so that's why we labeled it as our first one. Cause if we start with excellence, excellence can get mixed up with that, that P word, that perfect word sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so we define excellence as not chasing perfection, but like 1% better. That's where, uh, you know, we wear the bands and stuff like that. Um, but that's chasing like a 1% better. That's like, a, like no matter how good it is, I'm never satisfied in a, in a positive light of like, I'm still continuously trying to be better. There's something to do. Here's the cool part about the barbell. You can always add five more pounds. So no matter what your PR is, like there's always more. So like, why are you so wrapped up in hitting this one special number? There's five more pounds out there. I can go get the weight and put it on. And so like, that's something that people get caught up so much in when they're like trying to max out, like I got to hit 200 pounds or for this thing. And it's like, yeah, dude, but there's 205. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, cool. You hit 200 tons of high fives and celebrating. Now what, you know, like, like, yeah, like some numbers, like I say feel better than others, but like at the end of the day, like we're still chasing, you know, we're still, or at least this is what I've decided for myself. Like I'm still chasing health being healthy and moving. Like I still want a PR, like I still want the weight to go up, but like, that's not how I define success. Just pass or fail, red or green, you know, check or X. Like I don't define it that way. And so that's why we like the word excellence within that. Then empathy is more of the softer skill of like, you don't know what somebody else is going through. And so if you lead with empathy, you'll get, you know, sure. Maybe you get burned over, you know, over time, but like I would rather put myself in an empathetic state of like, like you don't know whose baby didn't sleep last night and they didn't sleep. Like you don't know who was just in a fight with their spouse or got, got fired yesterday. Like you have no idea these people and like, it's not their job to tell you and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's so quick on the core values, but I said all that, like efforts are number one. And so, um, that's just cool that, that you were talking about that of like literally just show up, try something new. Cause like, that's the, and that's why we have as, First is like, we think it's the first step into that window of change, which for us, OIL, like own your life is what CrossFit OIL stands for. Is like, we want to give people the power and let them realize that they have the power of choice. Like they can actually choose their life. And the first choice you can make is show up or not show up mm-hmm. the effort thing. So cool. That was my rant. That was my, that was my, uh, I say mini rant that ended up probably being a couple of minutes, but Great stuff. Um, well, cool. Uh, sweet. So it was a uh, good chat with you. Uh, you want to throw anything crazy in at the end? Like let's, uh, got any other, tell us about, um, modeling. I say modeling. <laughs> not that kind of modeling. <laughs> not that kind of modeling. <laughs> or whatever kind of modeling you're thinking of. Probably not the one you're thinking of. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave us with something fun. <laughs> Yeah, so fun fact, um, I love Godzilla. Don't know, I don't know how it started. Like probably like the old VHSs, just like my grandparents had, and like that was just something that we watched, like vacations, stuff like. But like I've always loved like the old cheesy Godzilla movies. Um, I have like all of them. <laughs> uh, I even have a tattoo. Um, so I love Godzilla. So one of the things um, I'm getting into is modeling my brother does a lot of modeling he does like a lot of the 3d printing modeling and like oh my gosh just awesome but i'm more like okay we're just gonna get plastic model and just glue it together and paint it so i've been working on i have one finished i'm working on my second one which is like a pretty tall one it's like 16 inches tall and it's just like the first godzilla from the first movie and he's just like stomping through tokyo and it's just so awesome so i've been working on that one 
So he's put together and painted. I just need to finish the spines on him. So I am the like spines. The spines. Let's go. Yeah. So I I'm close. I'm like ninety percent of the way there, and it has been a little frustrating because <laughs> I'm still new to the painting process, and I've had to like paint a couple times over. But it's like just how so like fun. how big is this thing? Is it like this whole table, or is it no, like no no? Or is it like Godzilla's like this, and then it's got about the... like yay high and about yay wide. Okay. Yeah. That's so cool. I did um I I I mean literally like who ever, but I did a couple of like. Like for a Christmas present, like one year growing up, I got like some cars and I did a little bit mm-hmm. and I was like, it was really neat. But the same thing, I would get like three quarters of the way through it and just get so frustrated. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because it's, it's a process, right? And like now I'm just realizing it's kind of what we go through, you know, fitness wise. It's a process. Like there are a lot of steps and a lot of things that have to be put together, but like you got to be committed to that process and then eventually you will have Godzilla. <laughs> So. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> then you can lift like Godzilla. Yep. All right. Well, that's cool. You got anything else? Anything else you want to throw at the throw at our our viewers? Uh, I guess the only thing other thing I would say will be to embrace the struggle. I am all about struggle. It makes us stronger and be kind to yourself. I think we really need to be more kind to ourselves and our bodies. Let's go. I'm gonna leave it on that. Embrace the struggle while still being kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. Love that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Katie. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for trying something new, stepping out of your comfort zone. Yep. I told you we were just going to talk. That was going to be it. Yep. So uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks if you're still watching. Thanks for listening. Um, like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Let us know what you think, comments, all that type of stuff. And uh, otherwise, if I don't see you at the gym, I will see you guys next week. I don't know who, I, who we're having on. I got a couple ideas, but uh, it'll probably be me, Jonathan. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do one by ourselves next time and then we'll bring somebody on for the next. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.